not adjust your screen, it is actually that big. That's what she said. Seriously, this is a character called Guts, and all over the statue are more Guts. So for those of you that know my real name, do you think I'd be surrounded by turlets? As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at a pretty rare piece, believe it or not, even though it's quite a bit older. So I want to say this guy is about two or three years old, but this is none other than Guts from Berserk. That's right, Guts is, one would argue, the main protagonist in an anime series called Berserk. Now, I've done a number of other reviews on pieces from Berserk. Now, Guts, as I said, is arguably the main character, but the other arguable main character is actually Griffith. And I've done a few different reviews on different versions of statues with Griffith, the Falcon of Light. You can check this one out right here. You can probably see some of the pieces behind me as well. So I'm working on some stuff with the Venom and Spider-Man stuff right behind you. If you're curious what that looks like, check out the room tour right here. But I'm pretty excited to show you guys what I have changed up. It looks pretty phenomenal. Now, the reason why I say this statue is rare because this is what we call a variant. So this is not the original version. So this was made by a company called Prime One Studios. As I said, it's guts in a one-fourth scale. And this is what the original statue looked like. You can actually still get it right now. They recently, they recently had it on their spring 2021 sale. But this is what they call the bloody variant. So the paint job is different. And if you can't tell, I apologize because we're in a different position. The lighting's a little bit low. It is completely bloody up but we're gonna do some close-ups during paint and sculpt and I realized I've never reviewed this piece even though this is the first thing that ever brought me into the berserk universe so I got this statue simply because it looked cool that's all I cared about and then I ended up getting the armored guts this piece right here because once again it looked really cool and my wait list converted with sideshow then I actually started watching the movies and reading the series and I got absolutely hooked I'm still on volume 5 right now so I haven't even seen his dog right down here yet or where that comes into the story but I have seen quite a few of the other things and I want to say I have about six more Berserk pieces on order, hence some of the empty shelves back there. But let's start with concept on this guy. And as a reminder, because I haven't read the entire series, I mean, I mean, not all of it has even been released in large volumes yet, I believe. I don't know what some of the conceptual stuff on the base is, but some of it I have seen it in the movies or read it in the book. So on the bottom, they have a museum style base, this sub base down here. And I always like that they do this because it matches the rest of the line, but they vary it up a little bit. So for example, this one has the brand of sacrifice on front. This is actually a permanent bloody tattoo he has on his neck, kind of showing he's marked for death. And the rest has this ornate writing. Like I said, it makes it flow well with the other berserk pieces. On the bottom here, you have a number of things. You have enemies. It looks like there's some are humans, some are monsters. There's blood all over. There's just certain pieces. Here you have these little ghost demonic creatures that actually come and get him at night. Part of the brand is sacrifice on his neck. Even in the back, some other creatures in a horror tree in reference to the story. So they tied a lot of the story into this piece. And as you see, this is a bloody variant. So they just pretty much doused it in blood. And I personally love bloody statues especially when it comes to guts. Not only is the series pretty graphic, but he is amazing and he doesn't care and he kills everything and everyone with his huge sword right here. He's known as the Black Swordsman. There's a few different display options you can do with this, but it's kind of his trademark. But it's not just that that makes him powerful, it's everything about him. So he has a standard costume armor on here, even though it's kind of hard to tell because it's so bloody. He has his robotic hand, because we're past the God Hand series where he's actually had his hand torn off. Tons of weapons all over him, because this guy kills hundreds of people at a time. And then he is sitting there with a smirk, because he really is a smart ass. He doesn't really care about much. He knows who he is, he knows what he wants, and I greatly appreciate that. So I love everything they did. The bass tells a huge story, his cape flowing in the wind, we didn't really talk about that. The expression, the different switch out options we're gonna talk about in design. I think the concept's a five out of five. I think a lot of people don't like how much is going on with this bass, but for me, it's a winner. Now let's talk about the design. So I'm not gonna assemble it for you because it was a long, long time ago that I put it together. I remember it was two huge boxes and there are tons of pieces. Pretty much anything you can think of comes off the base in separate pieces. And as I said, there are some switch out options. So let's look at that. There's two portrait options. The first is the one I have displayed, kind of a funny smirk, which I think embodies his personality, but so does the serious portrait that you can display as well. His sword, you can either have him holding it down like I do for space purposes, or on his shoulder. Let's get the dimensions on him. Now, this is a 1 4 scale piece. However, it's much larger than your typical 1 4 scale piece. The diameter of the base is about 17 inches. However, the widest point of the statue is near 26. 
The depth, you have a little bit more than the 17 inches, probably 18 or so. Then the tallest point right now is right at 29 inches, and he actually sits up top. So I can't display him the other way with his sword up because I think that goes up to 37 inches or in that range. So I think the size of it is a disadvantage, especially for a one four scale piece. Also, the weight is tremendous on this piece as well. I wanna say it's definitely over 50 pounds. However, everything flows together really well. There's no seam line issues and I like the switch out options. So I think design, I give it a four out of five despite the size and the weight being a disadvantage. Paint and sculpt, Prime One Studios rarely misses. That's the case here, let's check it out. So this is gonna be difficult to look at all the details simply because there's too much going on. But we'll start down here with this sub base. Like I said, this is some cool ornate designs and they added some dirt and dried blood on here, which I appreciate. So it's not too clean. There's not too much of a contrast from this to this right here. The brand is Sacrifice on the front. And it's interesting, we didn't really talk about this, but if you put this facing towards the front, you kind of see him looking from his side. Let's look at the bottom. So they just pretty much doused the ground in blood. And granted in the ground, you see some other things. You see some guts, you see some skulls, swords, spines. But I like it. I like the reflective uh, effect on that blood. Here is really the only part that is not bloody, this dirt back here. Then they have this creature, which I also remember seeing in the book. I like the translucent resin they used on this. And you normally don't see this when you're displaying it, but still pretty cool Easter egg. Same thing with the ghostly tree. Pretty neat how that stuff is hidden. Then let's dive into the dog here. I like the sculpt of the fur. Like I said, I haven't ran into him yet. A lot of moist effects on here on his eyes, on his tongue coming out. Giant dog, as you can see. So I'm sure it's not an actual dog. Some of the stones and more of the blood he's stepping on. This creature he's killed. I like the shine and you can kind of almost see this wooden type aspect to the creature's horns. See it more on the back here that the demons, another translucent uh, purplish. I never pictures the, these purple in the actual uh, book, but I, I think that was a cool choice. And they kind of move from a purple to a black on the back, kind of these wisp uh, demons with different faces. Phenomenal sculpt, great detail. And even on the creature, see some of these stuff like that just helps tell that story, does such a good job. And again, I do apologize about the lighting. Here, let me actually see if I can shine some more light on this for you guys. There we go. So again, uh, you know, as the light shines on it, you, you see more of that detail, but honestly, I kind of like it dark. It gives the statue more of a darker tone, which Guts is, you know, fighting with demons, both figuratively and literally. So I think that's cool. I love what they did with the cape, the blood smear all over it, the torn uh, uh, ends kind of flowing in the wind here blood all over his armor. This is probably my least favorite part. It's almost picking up a little bit orange in the camera. And I just don't like the way it doesn't look like dried blood, I think, because it's not caked on there. I think that's the issue where you see more caking on other parts of the statue uh, with that moist effect as well. Then it kind of draws out some of the detail in the sculpt of his armor right here. The sword looks fantastic. It is polystone, obviously not metal. Again, like how they uh, bloodied it. They bloodied the hilt here in his hand. Just overall, some really cool details. So much going on. You could literally stare at this for hours. Actually gives me a new appreciation pulling it down from its spot and, and reviewing it. You see all of his daggers up here in their sheaths. And then his portrait, spot on for guts, a little bit of an injury right there. He always seems to be injured, but I love that portrait. I love the, the uh, facial expression, his spiked hair looks great. I like the paint color for his skin. Like I said, it's hard to judge a lot of the colors um, because you don't see it in color when you're actually uh, reading the books. But overall, you could probably spend about uh, 20 minutes detailing each part of the sculpt and the paint on this but I think it's a winner. All right, now because I like Bloody, like we talked about with the paint, 
I really, really like it. I think it, on his armor, as I said, it could have been done a little bit differently, but still it's very clean, fantastically done. And you know, in the book, these are black and white. So to see what it looks like in color really just brings it to life. So I think the paint's a four out of five. However, I actually like the sculpt even better. I think they did phenomenal. Like I said, it's so cool to see pages actually come to life. I think the sculpt is five out of five on this piece. Well, let's talk about value. So this guy was 1,050 bucks plus shipping, but you had to buy directly from Prime One Studios to get the bloody version. And they made 150 of these. So this is relatively rare. Now the regular version, that's not bloody. They had a regular and an exclusive with some of the switch outs we looked at. That's still available. In fact, like I said, Prime One recently put it on their sale for 15% off. So you can get like the regular version for 850 bucks, which blows my mind because logic tells me so many people are getting into the books. You see people posting about them all the time. They keep coming out with more and more berserk statues. I think there's like four or five versions of guts you can actually buy or pre-order right now. And they're coming out with the secondary characters. So the line's incredibly popular, but to me, this is the quintessential guts and they're still available. So that kind of blows my mind. However, because I have the bloody version, I think that eliminates a lot of buyers. People don't necessarily want the bloody version. The majority of people don't. However, there are a select few out there like me who would much rather have it and honestly would pay even more for it. So I think because I got it at retail and it's such a low edition size, I think I could make money on this statue, which makes it a four out of five on the value as well. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. So does the statue have the X Factor? Is it a 5 out of 5 statue? If you don't like bloody statues, it's not even close. If you like bloody statues, absolutely. This is a five out of five. This is a showstopper. He looks phenomenal. He's probably still one of my favorite pieces, if not my favorite piece in the Berserk line. So I'm glad I was able to put him on the review table for you guys before some of those other pieces I have come arrive. So if you wanna see reviews of those upcoming pieces, make sure to hit that picture of me and hit that bell notification. Also do me a favor, drop a like on your way out and leave a comment to get you into that contest. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Take care.